Rick Okay. Yeah, it should be back in like 10 minutes or so. Okay. I have yes, I should mute myself. Experience only with two net labels. It's Dusty Dwax Kingdom and of course Black Sonic. And Black Sonic got me because there is no restriction in your music. It's no ma matter is music or electronic music. So how long have you been with Black Sonic? Two or three years, I, I think. So when you release albums on there, um, how much like feedback and support do you get from your releases? It's fun because I don't uh, have so much uh, feedback. It's only likes on social me media and no comments. Okay. But all, all the traffic is coming from Black Sonic. Right. Because there is a hell of a ton of listeners on Spotify. And Spotify is not working in Russia and Kazakhstan. So it's all from US and Europe. Okay. <laughs> Also, there is one cool net label called uh, called Busted. It's like Dusted Wax Kingdom, but there's a restriction from from music that is must it must be sampled only. No vocals allowed. Could you post a link to their site in yeah. the chat? I don't think I've heard of them. Cool. Also, there is a Russian net label called uh, Control. I think I can. There is no restriction in music, but it's, it's strange that you should pay them to be released. <laughs> Why is it strange? Because it it's free net label. Oh, um, they, yeah. They re release Let's... their music for free. Yeah, that's the main thing that separates net labels from other like physical labels is that all of their releases are for free through digital platforms. Me personally, and some of them have physical I... sides like Block Sonic, but it's mostly digital it seems. Hmm. Net labels. I'm probably familiar with net labels. I just have never thought of them in that way. I don't know. I just buy the music. Well, um, I guess whenever Doug like links to a net label on like Facebook or something, do you ever like click on the link and listen to it? To a label? Like, for instance, if, like, have you, like, listened to anything on Black Sonic or something? Oh, yeah, sure. Some of that, some, yeah, I listen to things on there. I guess I never really thought about whether or not, you know, I, 
I don't know. It's just right. like, it's not something I directed a lot of attention to. I usually just come and listen to music and decide whether or not I want to purchase the music or whatever I've got to do to get the music purchased is my most common option. I see. Huh. I need more caffeine, I think. <laughs> How have you guys been doing this week? Nice. Yeah. My hard drive is died. That's always music. that's all always a lot projects. of fun. <laughs> oh my man, can you get it? Well, your hard drive should be able to recover that, right? It's it's working, but I can't copy or write information on it on or from it. I think it, can you back it up or no? Some projects are backed up on external hard drive. That's good. Yeah. You might be able to take it some, I don't know what, you know, I don't know. You know all this stuff probably better than I do, but. It's it easy to just buy new. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you can probably save your data though. You know, somehow you might be able to recover your data so you don't lose anything. I mean, computers are pretty good like that. Usually you can recover data so you don't just have to throw it in the dumpster, you know. I don't know. What have you guys been listening to lately? Really, it's just the same stuff that I've linked to in the past weeks. Oh, um, really? I, like, I didn't really make any new discoveries this past week. Um, Man, did I, you? I, yeah, uh, my I, I I invited my friend Grant here. He's uh, doing uh, he's in the Creative Commons too, but he he was going to show. He would like to have been in the video, but he was going on a float trip this weekend. But he alerted me to like a uh, cool music scene going on apparently, uh, the Chicago spiritual jazz scene. And I don't know if it's called that or not. It's just what he referred to it as. And people like Angel Bat DeWitt and Junius Paul and Cahill El Zabar's Ethic Heritage Ensemble, Ensemble and Michaela McRaven I'm familiar with, uh, the drummer. He's a really talented dude. And then uh, he also told me about an album with Joe Harriet and Amasio Da Silva Quartet called Hum Dunno. And I haven't got to listen to it, but he, he's championing championing the album. So this is some stuff I'm on. I'm seeking out. I listened to Angel Bat DeWid, and it was it was really uh really cool stuff. Uh, so what's the difference between jazz and spiritual jazz? Oh, there's a good question. You know, people think. Uh, you know, I don't know what the movement's all about. I, it's no, all new to me what's going on in Chicago, apparently. This is all new as of a couple of days ago. But, I mean, I think uh, a lot of jazz is like dance music, right? I mean, swing music was really dance-oriented. But I think after the 60s, jazz became a real spiritual-oriented thing. I think everyone thinks of uh, Alice Coltrane and John Coltrane, maybe... And then people like, um, I think a lot of free jazz is really spiritually oriented, you know, too. Uh, so, um, a lot of civil rights and things like that are being addressed in jazz, especially things like free jazz. And uh, since the 60s, I don't know what differentiates the Chicago spiritual jazz scene, the people that he's talking about, uh, except with Michaela McRaven. I know he's went, uh, he recently did an album about uh, Gil Scott Heron. Are you familiar with Gil Scott Heron? No. Oh, well, he's a, he's like a civil rights, black rights uh, poet. And he came out with a lot of albums on Flying Dutchman. Uh, 
I love him. He's powerful. Have you ever heard uh, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised? I think so. That's that's Gil Scott Heron. Okay. He's the one that wrote that. And uh, anyway, Michaela uh, McRaven kind of did some remixes of his stuff. And uh, anyway, so this is some stuff. I've, I've known Gil Scott Heron for a long time, but not personally. I wish I had seen him personally. But uh, so that's some stuff I've been kind of i'm just starting to listen to this music not jazz and free jazz but the stuff coming out of chicago currently so it's kind of exciting cool yeah and then i got a bunch of uh uh what's this band called recently i got an album and i had uh a lot of times i, I collect autographs so uh, a lot of times i when I buy an album and if it's from a small label or something, I, I, uh, I see if I can get an autograph somehow. And I was really surprised that they did. They autographed the album and it was uh blown, uh, flower violence is the album. And, uh, they autographed it for me. I got a kick out of that one. I got it in the mail this week. You said flower, flower violence was the name of the album. Yeah, by who who? the the artist is B L O with a little dash thing above it M. Yeah, because I'll go get the album and show it to you. Just a second. Yeah, there's actually a uh, a record label called Flower Violence. Strap that in the. Uh, I wish uh, Mark was here because um, they're German, but. Uh, I don't know, like if they're still around or. That actually wasn't what I was thinking when I um. When I went for flower violence, but uh. You what? That's the first thing that popped up. So there's a there's a German record label called Power Violence, but that's actually not why that I um. So uh, Potato Hate Explosion has an album called um, Flower Violence as well. So. Oh wow. Um, I don't know if you, yeah, here's the album and here are the autographs, which I thought was cool. Uh, here's some German label. I think it's net label too. All this is actually oh no they just their icon change so here's here's the flower violence record that i i know it's it's really um i mean if you don't if you don't like um metal at all you're probably not gonna like it but uh it's pretty uh it's pretty interesting it's got a lot of hip-hop in it um but um it's like I mean, I call them a grindcore band. I mean, I guess their their tags are like cyber grind, hardcore, metalcore. But I mean, like, if you're just expecting like you know eleven tracks of pure cyber grind, this is this is not it. Uh, Glitter grind, <laughs> Glitter grind. The uh, follow up was probably uh, is pretty good too. But I don't think it's as good as a uh, as a uh, flower violence. <laughs> If you like black metal music, so you will like that group from Russia. The Project Moon Circle? No, no, no. Next. Oh. Urasaki Dogi. It's Black Hope. Uh, black metal. Yeah. And hip, hip hop. <laughs> this is an album by Erickson D. Dinoso. Uh, pretty cool. Well, deal. I also got some custom artwork from him, but, but this is just a printout. Oh, that's from, uh, is that from the Lungs album? Yeah. You're familiar with this guy? Yeah. Um, he, I, I don't, I think all of his bands are, but his tracks are creative commons. Um, we actually talked about him on a, um, on one of these chats at least once before. Um, yeah, he's killer. He lives. He lives out here where I, you know, in the northwest. So, 
Yeah, he has like a lot of like uh, Indonesian influence in his uh, music. It's like, I don't know what you even describe it as. It's like um, ethno post -funk. psychedelic, <laughs> psychedelic, uh, spiritual music or something. I don't know. Oh, um, I recently there was something. Uh, it was also out of Indonesia that I posted in uh, in that abnormal um, abnormal music group a couple of weeks ago. Um, did you see that? Um, I'm not Caleb? sure. I, I, there's so much of that stuff's going through that feed nowadays that I, I just have kind of I'm not watching it as much as like yeah. you did in the past. I, I don't like memes. Like I, the, I liked that feed when it used to just post people with the records. And that was it. And now people are throwing up memes and all kinds of crap that I'm not interested in. So it makes it difficult for me to keep attention to that. And of course, I can't remember the name of the band. So like the search right. feature is pretty useless. <laughs> um, uh, oh, you know what? I think it was on X No Wave. Uh, or yes, no wave um, records. Speaking of uh, net labels, um, so th so th you know it's interesting because there's a lot of um, net labels and stuff that we were kind of off of our um, off off the music management grid because we don't we didn't do any no derivatives. But the irritating thing is that now, yes, no wave is just like at least on Bandcamp, they don't they don't use the no derivative. Well, it's no it's irritating that they didn't do it sooner, but it's it's nice, I guess, that they, you know, now they do allow derivatives. So this is the this is the one um, that it's like um, it's not really like ancient. It's like almost like you know middle ages um type timeline 1041 um is when the uh kingdom of Kaharapan. um i have no idea if i pronounced that correctly but um that's that's when this this ritual comes from that um that kingdom in Ind indonesia and so the um the music is but it's like you know electronic music now i like kind of like they, they they you know i know it's like a it means something very specific once you're in electronic music, but they have it tagged as like techno. So I don't know if it's strictly speaking techno, but um, but yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting if you uh, if you like electronic music. I thought. Hmm. Um, oh yeah, the the old time religion that uh, I don't think their stuff is Creative Commons, but the um, but Arrington's is. Uh, huh. um, so I missed the uh, the beginning part. Did you guys talk about Net Label Day at all, or? No, oh, I'm not familiar with Net Label Day. Huh. Yeah, so Net Label Day is coming up July 14th. So, um, you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, was was it would it have been better to do after Net Label Day? I don't know. Maybe maybe we can do a before and after. Maybe maybe Net Label Day should be a a topic in and of itself for net label 2020 um net label day 2020 that would be um i can't so it's the fifth and then the 12th so i guess the 19th would be the only thing about that is i don't know if i'll be um i definitely won't be around on the 12th but if we do net label day for the 19th i could probably i could probably make that happen um but uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like record store day, um, I guess, you know, just a day to sort of like um, bring people together um, about net labels. Um, I really so, wonder how many net labels are going to participate this year. It's a few years ago, like over 100 did, but then last year it was kind of small. Yeah, uh, I mean, they're not like doing anything to promote it really so you know it's kind of extra well i mean i mean it's like people don't even know about it you know yeah um you know they don't even have like um i mean i guess it's like it's always on july 14th but like there's nothing that says like you know you land on the home page and there's nothing that says like 2020 like it's just it's not there so um 
you know, it's kind of, um, but, uh, Donny Ozone has, I think he's had a, um, a release every single, um, net label day. So I suspect I don't have any insider knowledge on this, but I suspect, um, he'll have, uh, another, another release this year. So, um, you know, he's making music all the time, so I'm sure I'll have something to, uh, he'll want to, he'll want to put out from that. Did you guys talk about, uh, Klong Klong Moo at all? No. It's another one, one that we've talked about, um, before. So, um, Klong Klong Moo has, uh, a list of net labels. Um, it's, it's not... I wouldn't say comprehensive, although they did last update it on June fifteenth. Um, so you know it's it's up to date in some respects. Um, but um, and I don't know again like what the criteria is, um, but there's definitely like stuff on Bandcamp that um, isn't on here. Last time I checked, anyway. So yes, No Wave is on here. Block Sonic is on here. Um, but I don't know if like I don't know if like hypnotic dirge. I don't think hypnotic dirge is on here yet. So hypnotic dirge is not on here, um, which is probably like my favorite. Well, yeah. I mean, if I was just gonna pick one label other than Black Sonic to like, you know, listen to, it would definitely definitely be hypnotic dirge. Um, so I probably was- talked about. I was talking about Russian net label called Control, if you know it. Hmm. And it's very strange that you must to pay to be released on. <coughs> oh yeah. So they um. But it's almost like a promotion tool. Free. So what do they uh, what do they charge? Uh, they charge for being re- released on Spotify, Apple Music, but they are using one RPM. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean that makes sense, but I mean, what's the, what's the fee that the, what that they um, that they ask? It's the rubble seats one hundred. Oh, I don't know what that is. Is that, and I don't know, like, um, two dollars. Uh huh. Yeah. This, uh, this uh, Duck Duck Ghost is, yeah, $1.43. So that's, yeah, that's not, yeah. not all that much. Is, um, do like other countries outside of Russia use the ruble? Cause I know, like, in Scandinavia and Scandinavia, like, Denmark and Sweden, at the very least, both have the kroner, um, but it's like not—it's not the same currency, even though it's called the same thing. You know, it's like Canadian dollars and U.S. dollars. Like they're not—we call them both dollars, but they're not the same thing. <laughs> There's rubles in Russia and Belarus. All right, so these are our Russian ones that you're uh, you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting. Um, do they have any that they just put out, but they don't put out on Spotify and stuff? I don't. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, there's uh, all sorts of different. Um, there's uh, just plain just plain sounds. I don't think just plain sounds is on the Klong Klong Moo either. Um, yeah. So. But um, that's that's by um, just plain Ant or um, Anthony Gillison, who's um, he releases on Black Sonic. Um, but I don't I don't know. Um, when their last release was. I don't know if they're still putting stuff out. Yeah, it looks like it looks like they might be dead. Um, 
but um, I'll drop their link in the um, in the chat as well. It's really sad looking at that list on the Kong Kong Wu and seeing so many dead labels. Yeah, well, the, I mean, it is, but at the same time, like I know there's also stuff that's like, um, you know, that there's stuff that's not on there. And the other thing is, is that even if they're like dead, um, in a lot of cases, the stuff is still out there. You know, the website is still the same or it's on archive.org. Uh, and I guess that's, that's something worth, um, there's also mentioning. the net label archive website, um, which, archives really old net labels that apparently don't actually have their stuff online on other websites. Um, they've archived like 15 or so. Oh, net yeah. labels. Um, they were inactive for a few years and then suddenly they it's were really back to archiving. There is no net label from Kazakhstan. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, if you if you look at the um, on the Klong Klong Mu over on the right after the colors, there's a where and then whether it's Creative Commons and then their their status alive or dead. And you can see most of them, um, you know, a large percentage um, are Creative Commons, but not all of them. And um, and but then, yeah, some of them don't have locations. So they could be from Kazakhstan, like this 141414. 14, 14, there's no location and 20 KBPS records, no location. So I mean, most of them do have a location, but you'll. Um, Jeez. What was that? Oh, I'm just like looking at all the dead labels. It's like a graveyard site. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, um, it would be cool to get uh, get the people at Klong Klong Moo to come. I did I did invite them, um, but um, there was one that was red. What's the red mean? So I guess Ben and Beth couldn't show up again. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I don't ever talk to Beth, um, so I don't really know what she's what she's up to um, these days. Um, oh, they the red ones are new. Um, is that so I guess that so mono I guess we can just pop the um, pop those links in there oh yeah so that's there's only one that's new but it looks like um oh no that's for releases i was gonna say it looks like there's a place to submit but um if you are a um a musician or a net label person um over on the right and that might be on all of the Hong Kong new sites on their sidebar yeah i'm, I'm just on their typical right hand sidebar that you can submit new releases over there so we should probably um do that oh this is interesting i didn't realize this was on a, a net label um so i wonder if they post things that aren't on net labels um this is, this is an album that i i knew about um i'll post it in the uh it's actually um like the first track i thought i don't know i had a, i had a hard time for the first track but then like once i kind of got into the album it was pretty good um it's like folk metal and death metal but also like um kind of like got some industrial type stuff which like you don't really see a lot of folk metal and industrial they're kind of like you know differing uh aesthetics really but um they kind of they, they put together a pretty interesting different way um but yeah so it looks like you don't you don't even necessarily need to be on a um a net label it's just any sort of net audio um release you can you can post your stuff there if you want or stuff you know about you want to people you want to promote um 
I just happened to know about that one. So, um, but yeah, so, oh, wait, did I post the, um, the mono? I didn't. So this is the new, the new net label that they, I guess they put up on June 15th. Um, so I kind of wonder how many of those like dead net labels, like are started by people that like start new ones and stuff. Like, um, I don't really have any like insight into that, but I just sort of like, wonder if, if people want like a, you know, they like used to have like a, a metal label and now they want to do like experimental stuff. And so they, they just change the name. There's this guy, um, he goes by like Neurowolf and Neurotech. And um, I think he's got another one. Um, but uh, so he like posted this big thing, you know, like this is like his last album or whatever. Um, and, uh, I think that was Neurotech, but he's like still putting out music under Neurowolf. Um, which I mean, yeah, so Neurotech is his metal one and Neuroaxis is like ambient and down tempo. Um, and then Neurowolf is like trance and future pop. So he's got these like three different things and, um, I don't know if Neuroaxis and Neurowolf are still both um, both going. It looks it looks like it is because um, yeah, he's released under Neurowolf and Neuroaxis both in um, both in 2020. That's uh, that's your um, your region, Sam. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with him or not. I am not. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I like, I like the metal stuff, but um, here's the neuro axis. I mean, it, neuro is spelled the same way, but I might as well drop the link in there. So um, I think he uses, yeah. So different license types for reasons I don't really know. Um, it's got the BYNC ND on the, neuro, the latest neuro axis and the um, BYNCSA for the left latest Neurowolf for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's pretty good. Um, there's, there's kind of these things, uh, there's like these collectives and I, I guess this kind of the Neurowolf Neuroaxis thing kind of goes into that, but like there's the um, release the long ships. I don't know if this is something that you've seen um, at all in sort of like the net label scene at all. Um, but uh, like a band will start sort of like posting like other bands stuff. It kind of starts to look like a net label. Um, so I guess release the long ship is not where they're doing that. Maybe it's builder. Um, but this guy, he has like a bunch of different bands that he's in. It doesn't look like it's builder anyway. I'll, so you guys can see release release the long ships is worth checking out, but uh, I don't think they're as prolific as some of the other, um, you know. So their last release was 2016, but they've oh no that that's just the one that's up at the top of their um. So 2017, it looks like it might be. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this this is what I'm saying. So like um. It's like the release the long ships page, but then this album is actually not a release the long ships album. It's a wilderness. Um, I don't know if it's like literally two V's if you pronounce it wilderness at that point. I don't really know, but it's it's VV wilderness. It's it's not spelled like you know wilderness would be in English. Um, and so he's got devour the or he's got wilderness and then there's there's another one um what is the other one called uh i'm poking around here um but they're they're related to um black hill and silent island and music for messier i don't know if you guys are familiar with them at all um but they have some of the same realm of wolves was one of the ones that the same guy is in and um and Stri Strivener, i think is also that he's in 
And I don't know if they're just like accidentally using the wrong Bandcamp page when they do that or like, cause it, it's not like all of them are coming out under the same one. So it's kind of, um, so the, this might all just be Realm of Wolves um, on this page. So maybe they, I feel like they do like a lot of the like promotion and stuff comes out under the other page. Um, but I don't know, that, maybe that's just a, um, an oddity of Van Camp. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts about any of that. The background picture is almost the same. It's some fo forest. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. I think some of their newer stuff is not. Yeah, so some of the stuff is not. The newer stuff is not Creative Commons, sadly. Um, They've got some interesting album artwork. For the uh, Realm of Wolves or just in general? Yeah, the Realm of Wolves. Yeah. Yeah, these beautiful drawings. Mm. Mm. So, um, I know you said that you didn't know a lot about um, net labels, Caleb, but like, you know, are there any like band camp labels that you, um, that you follow? Oh yeah. I follow like basically anyone I buy an album from, I follow them, but uh, let's see. Band camp. Hmm. I guess I could just log in and look. But, hmm. Yeah, I think another one um, that I have mentioned um, before that I don't think is on um, Klong Klong Moo is uh, Yoga for Your Ears. Hmm. Drop that um, link. In. I think they're from your neck of the woods, Caleb. Oh, yeah, what, they're from who is it? Uh, the label is yoga for your ears. Oh. Um, <laughs> so they have different, um, sun yoga is one of the, um, that's their most, the artists that they most recently released. There's um, a, there's a band called yoga for your ears. I don't know if that's the same one. Yeah, this is, this is definitely, a, a label. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, Sun Yoga, Apollo Eight. Those are two of the most recent releases. Um, Namid Wolf was that their April. They don't have a release every month, but oh yeah, Holographic Girl, Zephyr, The Roomy Depth, all sorts, all sorts of different artists. Oh, okay. Sure. I guess you can. Um, it's Sun easier yoga. to see see all the different musician names and go to slash music then but yeah, uh, I, I guess i follow like astral spirits and uh hive mind records and a few, a few you know a few just artists that are releasing things oh yeah so hive mind oh yeah um that uh I I um sent I think I posted in the um maybe I put it on Twitter but um a Mississippi um, Records I didn't mean to interrupt Don Doug, sorry. Oh no, that's that's fine. Uh, that's the um But it, it was like a, they were calling themselves like a, you know, it was like a audio project or something, but it was all these like, um, 
there there used to be a I think a radio show excavated shellac, but that 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 was on um, Free Music Archive. Um, but this this was a similar sort of thing, um, but a um, it was a different name I think. So there's uh, there's the link for excavated shellac, but it's kind of like. Um, I don't know. To me, this is like they're putting out different music, um, and e even if they're sort of like not um, calling themselves a label. To me, they're 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 really in a net label. I don't I don't really know um, what anybody's thoughts about that stuff is. Hmm. So that's really prolific. Do you remember, I, th I think I sent that to, to you, Sam. Do you remember me sending that? Uh, I do not. Yeah, I may have posted it on the group. Uh, let's see. Because there was a bunch of, well, there were a few, and a whole bunch of um, thing on the uh, that net label. Yeah, so. Uh, They've got a artist from Kazakhstan. Nice. What? 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 <laughs> I'll probably butcher this name, but Abakin Casino. I don't know. It's the first thing that pops up when you load up the excavated shell egg site. So this is the um, the shellac head is the one that I I posted in the um, in the group chat or in the discussion. Um, but, um, you know, it's kind of like, they're not really calling themselves a label, but to me, they're, they're basically, uh, they're a label. Fun. It's really Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I really like that net labels do sometimes is put out these compilations, like the one I just put in there, Insectorama. <laughs> Yes, Songs of the Swahili Coast is the last shellac head. It's interesting. I guess they took a break for a while. They uh, they had well, I, you know, sometimes these Bandcamp releases are not in order. So, yeah, okay. So, clicking through, it looks like that's actually correct. Like they had a break from 2016 to 2020. So maybe they had some time in. Uh, Quarantine to uh, to get something out. Hmm. Was uh, do you know if like Hive Mind was like a you know a record label from back in the day that moved to Bandcamp, or are they are they in sort of a Bandcamp generation label or um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, this is stuff I just don't think about that often. I, I should. So I'm glad to become aware of this. Oh, deathbed tapes, kind of a noise. Um, noise. Oh. Yeah, I think that, uh, like the the like tape the old school tape scene has like a lot in um a lot in common with the net label scene you know like the net label scene is is kind of the the internet version of that I mean you know and um to some extent. What is this label? I bought, I bought. Then there are just studios too. That I guess Black Dirt Studio would be an. Is that an, are we calling that a net label or? What? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know what they uh, are. They on Bandcamp, Black Dirt Studio. Yeah. I guess they would be. Yeah. 
it's not a, it's not a black dirt studio by them must have like a, a hyphen or something mm. or maybe i did studios yeah and then there's like this the whole like um um is it new, is it new sound i feel like that's not i feel like that's not right no new focus new focus is what it is like they don't call themselves a label they call themselves a collective um i love that i'm i'm i don't know i wish i knew more collectives i think that's a cool idea Focus recording. I think uh, New Focus is pretty interesting in that, like, um, you know, they, they've had like plenty of like Grammy winners and um, Grammy nominees and stuff to, there that are putting on, putting out through them. So. Um, a lot of the stuff is, uh, I don't know, like, I, I, I have a hard time with, like, um, a lot of, sh like, um, violin type, you know, like, that type of string instrument has, like, a really, can have, like, a really abrasive sound, uh, they they seem to have a fair amount of that, which I don't like. But they're putting out stuff all the time, so <laughs> so it's like all over the place, you know, as far as like um, what you um, might get. Is it so easy to be become you know, Grammy nominee? Um. <laughs> I think it's very difficult to become a Grammy nominee. Probably. Yeah, I mean, um, first of all, you got to make music that people want to listen to, generally. People being, you know, just mass culture, which is, I don't know. It's not. A lot of the artists I listen to are. are have more artistic aims as their focus rather than just writing a really popular tune so no. yeah and sometimes like with bob reynolds so um bob reynolds um he didn't get nominated for his uh so I'll just, i guess i'll just um this is not his actual so he, he has a release this year so i might as well post it in in here um but um i think he his grammy nomination came with or he won a grammy actually um but i think that was with snarky puppy oh um, sure not, not as a solo um i saw them live pretty good. i like them more live than i do their the stuff that i've heard actually they're real fun yeah so i don't are they a snarky puppy still a thing or i don't know as far as i know they are yeah, yeah. but uh he's also played um with john mayer i mean so he's um you know well known and um actually snarky puppy has won three grammys so uh, yeah, they are still around. I don't know if uh, if Bob is still a member, but um... they have a rotating cast. I think we've got a lot of people in that group. Yeah, it says members of Snarky Puppy have performed with Erica Baidu, Marcus Miller, Justin Timberlake, Stanley Clark. Kirk Franklin, Ari Wing, Wing, I don't know how, I don't know, Ari, Ari, not Ari. Uh, I was trying to pronounce both of them the same thing. Ari Hoining, uh, Roy Hargrove, David Crosby, and Snoop Dogg. 
and many other artists. I just wanted to get the Snoop Dogg <laughs> at the end. I think they're. <laughs> I think that's kind of interesting. They want you to know that they're hired guns. You know. Yeah. Well, that's that's how you make the money. Right. <laughs> I was this, just, this, is, this is their Wikipedia page. I mean, it's not them, like right. But I, I but. just, but uh, before I was on on here with you guys, I was listening to an interview with Kurt Rosenwinkel, and he was talking about all the different people he played with before he came out with his own album. It was kind of yeah. interesting conversation. Yeah. So he was won. on all kinds of albums too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, they won Best R&B Performance, and they won uh, Best Contemporary Instrumental Album, and they won, um, oh, in 2016, they won Best Contemporary Instrumental Album, and in 2017, they also won Best Contemporary Instrumental Album. I don't know what that, uh, what that uh, award is. Um, Oh, it was previously called the Best Pop Instrumental Album, but they changed the name. Probably people that want it, you know, they're like, don't want to be associated with with pop. <laughs> so that's why they changed the name. That'd be my guess. <laughs> huh. Larry Carlton, Booker T. Jones, and Snarky Puppy are the only musicians to receive the award more than once. They've got that that going on, but yeah, um, with New Focus, I know, um, I I don't follow them super closely, but I know that they had a um a percussion trio that either won or was nominated, um, and I think it was like actually them, um, but that was a couple years ago, I think, so I might have to, because they, they release pretty frequently, so I might have to uh, <laughs> just scroll back. But yeah, they have instrumental stuff and vocal stuff, and uh, um, yeah, Third Coast Percussion. This is the, uh, this is the one that, um, this is from 2017. When I saw Snarky Puppy Live, they did a really great audience interaction piece of the show towards the end. And they had the audience clapping in uh, polymeters mm. and the band. It was pretty interesting. Yeah, so this, um, the Third Coast Productions, they actually, uh, they won a, a, um, a Grammy. This doesn't actually say what for on their, um, on this band camp entry, but I bet they they might have a Wikipedia page that'll that'll tell us. I bet it, I bet it's the same like instrumental category. That would be my guess because I mean they're they're like a percussion group, so they don't they don't really have a vocalist. <laughs> um, Says they are known for its touring and recording activities that meld the energy of rock music with the precision and nuance of classical chamber works. And one um, best chamber music slash small ensemble performance is what they won. Okay, and there's black dirt. It looks like um, I just have this black dirt um, thing still up when I was clicking through stuff. They had a very clear like visual aesthetic for a while, and then they kind of like mixed it up. It was like black with like this uh, monochrome images in front, and then they sort of moved to like blocks being the I mean, not not just blocks, but like two, three, four. Five. Five of the last seven since they went from that other visual aesthetic as are, are blocks. So that's that's quite. I mean, I guess actually this one has blocks too. The Wednesday Nudson from the other side that has a couple blocks. But but the five out of the seven are are very. They're like 
all the images are is a series of blocks. Huh. Okay. So uh, I think we, did we put the black dirt? No, we didn't. So there's the black dirt dot band camp, the black dirt studio that Caleb was mentioning. And you can see the, uh, you know, the, the very clear visual aesthetic for all the releases. And then um, I think Caleb lost connection. But I think this is one thing that like really sort of like, um, I, th I think is kind of like the essence of a lot of net labels. I mean, certainly with Bloxonic, um, you know, like it's, um, it's the, um, the visual aesthetic that um, Mike brings to the album artwork um, and to the liner notes and stuff. Um, I mean, and not always, but I think like a lot of the, the well-known um, net labels, that's a, that's a big part of it. Um, would you would you say that that's that's accurate, Sam, or is that more of a more of a um, outlier? Um, I'm not sure. Um, uh, I will say that it feels like a net label because apparently, at least their January twenty twenty release seems to be a free download, but. Um, the uh, well, I'm not looking at them in order. You're talking about Black Dirt. Yeah, yeah. They're Nash Eleven album things. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It can be hard to look. It can be hard to tell if it's really a net label, but um, I do like the album art and. Not apparently not all of their uh, not all of them are um, free downloads. So like right. a lot of them after that, it's by five dollars. They only on Bandcamp. I don't know. They don't have a website, so I mean, I suspect so. Do you know, Caleb? We're talking about. No, um, I've Black only Dirt. ever. I've only ever. Uh, done anything with them on Bandcamp? So yeah. okay. I bought their dis discography because it was a good deal. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's definitely the way to go with Bandcamp is to just uh, um, get it all. I mean, if you can afford it, um, they do have um, a website. Actually, it's interesting though that. Um, they don't seem to link the two together. Yeah, that's strange. I um, would think they would do that. Unless there's just two that are things that are named the same that don't have anything to do with each other. But the the, the logo looks very similar, though. They have a Patreon page? Supposedly. <laughs> Oh, it's actually a studio, like re real studio. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, the uh, the actual goal of the um, the Patreon page. So that they're gonna, they want to stop charging uh, musicians for studio time. Oh wow! Yeah. So. Yeah, musicians take a, a risk all the time too. I can't believe how many people I've known that have spent just gobs of money on demos that they're never going to see the money back on. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Maybe that's the story of the artist, though, in general, in this culture. Very difficult to 
being artists and have make work and get your money back on your investment. Seems like. It's a challenge. And imagine how it hot and stupid in Kazakhstan. Imagine what? <laughs> How, how it's hard and stupid in Kazakhstan. <laughs> so looking at the, um, their, um, the actual like studio website, my guess is, is that they offer some sort of like package deal and maybe we can verify this, but, uh, that, you know, they'll say like, you know, yeah, you can you can come to the studio, but for an additional fee, you know, we will produce the album artwork and we'll put it up on our band camp um, and stuff. And that's probably why, because it's like a single designer that's like doing all of those. And that's why that the stuff on band camp seems to have a very clear um, aesthetic, uh, because if, if you go to um, go to. Uh, oh, I thought I thought it was the music page. Is that the wrong place? Oh, it's the clients page. If you go to the clients page, then you can see that there's like a lot more stuff um, that they've got there than they do on the band camp. So, um, you know, I don't know. And, but you also see, you do see that like some of those band camp ones on there too. So um, it's definitely the same place. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, an interesting, interesting thing. I um I haven't brought it up today. Um, I know I've brought them up before, um, but I might as well, in case um somebody watches the um the video. Um, so I think this kind of like drive homes the de drives home the definition of a net label. So we have this um quote unquote records which um, is all like download for free. It's all Creative Commons. Um, but then the same people um, do really records. Um, and, um, but I, I think that like these days people don't, you know, like, you know, like with Black Sonic, it's like you come to Black Sonic and it's like you get the sort of like net label stuff and then you get the physical release um, stuff too. Um, but um, you can see here that there's like a lot of the same artists like Archipelago is on quote unquote and Hard Girls. Um, you know, it's just if, if they want to, you can you can see the, um, you know, they have images of the the actual vinyl and like the boxes and um, I don't know how well the like images and stuff. I don't think they post paste very well into the um, into the chat, but um, I guess um, it's pretty easy. I think I think it's pretty easy to share. Um, screen two. Let's see here. I can't tell what screen two is. Oh yeah, that's the one. You guys can see the uh, my screen now. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, uh, and that they're vinyl, and they've got these like stacks of boxes of uh, <laughs> of records that are that are coming out. Um, although, you know, 2012 is when all of these are. So, and the site's still up. I don't know what they're um, what they're still doing. Um, and this is an old record, so I don't know what that has to do with um, the tours, but um, <laughs> do you remember um, like what they did last year for uh, for Net Label Day, Sam? Um, like like any events? Uh, I mean, not really any events events instead of just the fact that a lot of labels just released in the same day um i do know that there are some podcasters who focus on net label day releases for like a few weeks 
Um, the um, podcast factory, um, they have. Um, Oh, this just this, so the Facebook page just had a, a recent uh, post, the Net Label Day Fest. So this this just this just came out actually. You can look at the the date there on the um. Uh, <sighs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in the past few years, Pete Coggle's um, podcast factory has done a bunch of like net label releases episodes um i mean um and like when it's like a few weeks until net label day he did some like this is what these artists sound like and then after net label day it's like these songs are what the artists released on net label day it's such um But besides, yeah, so the, besides that, I don't really know of any other even like things that are related to Night Label Day. So it seems like, yeah, so the part one of three is out. So if people want to listen to listen to that, um, yeah, so this one's got, it's got 14 tracks. Um, Enough Records is one that, uh, and Pilot 11, those are both names I recognize. Some some stuff I don't recognize as well. Well, Mist, they're the ones who created Net Label Day. So. Yeah, I can't really think of much that... Um, you know, it's uh, what I, I wanted to do when I started um, the Creative Commons Community Music Awards was have the have those be announced on um, Net Label Day, but people really got confused by having a, a mid year awards, um, so we just we just had to move it. Um, it just didn't work. Um, so I don't know. We ha we have talked about um, about doing something else. Um, you know, there's not again 100% crossover between Creative Commons and that label, but I think there's enough to where um, you know that um, we should be able to do something with the um, with uh, Creative Commons um, Music Awards. So if you guys have ideas. Um, you know, and certainly uh, entertain those. I uh, I was starting to do this earlier, and I think I got sidetracked um, from posting the um, the because you were talking about the net label archive, um, but there's also the net label collection on archive.org, um, and so that's that's worth checking out. Um, Definitely some some old standbys, clinical archives, Bad Panda Records, Dusted White Steam, um, Torn Flesh. Torn Flesh is on Bandcamp for sure. Um, if That's the, w org is blocked in Kazakhstan. <laughs> Archive.org is blocked? Yeah. Oh, that's lame. Um. This uh, this one might be a good one for you, Caleb. Mm. I don't know how recent um, those releases are on there or if they're still active. It looks like 2017 might have been the last time they uploaded to archive.org. Yeah. Um, That's what I don't it looks know. like. Are they are they still going? Uh, yeah. 
Why did you think it was one for me? Oh, just the the um the type of music that it is. Oh. Just I haven't listened to that much of them, but um I just remember um from back in the day. Um it seemed like something that uh would appeal to you. Hmm. Oh, I, I had this, the um extremely uh mild and pleasant tasting. <laughs> Um, which was a re-release of um, some Bob Chaos record stuff, which uh, that was a cassette only label. Um, and so that's, that's one of those like the cassette scene and that label sort of, um, you know, but um, yeah, Dr. Lawyer Indian Chief. That, that was like one of the few ones that I actually would listen to. Oh, um, <laughs> Fuck me, I'm stupid. Would you cut off your dick for art? Um, some uh, some memorable ones, but the only one that I um, I really like, really liked. And I think it was a little punkier, what, rather than being sort of like more experimental. Um, it was a little more punky. Was the Doctor Lawyer Indian Chief? But um, but yeah, I definitely had that one on the hard drive for. Well, I'm, I probably still do um, on my old desktop. Um, I don't I don't use it anymore because um, like basically like I, I need to run like some some Cat Five cable into here because um, like we have the wall jacks but like they're not active. And when we moved in, Comcast came out um, to like set up the TV and stuff, um, but. I wasn't here and they were supposed to like make sure the internet stuff was all active too. And it wasn't. So I haven't one of these days I'll get around doing that, but, Oh, uh, Lee is in the, um, in the group now. I'm just having to see this. He, he, he had a release on, um, WM, uh, Lee for a while was the head guy at, um, happy pupper, happy pupper. I can't talk happy puppy records. <laughs> um, but, um, we talked about Lee a little bit when we talked about music as a tool. Um, and he has like some meditation, um, stuff, but, um, and, uh, I think Robert, um, who's been here a couple of times, Robert, not only, um, I think he, he, um, knows a bit about the WM records, but, um, sadly he's not, um, not here today. So, um, I'm just looking through the WM stuff to see if there's anything else that I I remember from there. But there's a big drop off um, in uh, I don't know if this is like a um, statement on net labels or a statement on archive.org, but um, you you see like stuff pre-archive.org, you know, like there's one release from 1966, you know, there's four releases from 1979 and it's all, you know, there's a few more from the eighties. Um, but actually, I mean, I guess like around 83, it starts to pick up, um, you know, you're in the double digits every year after that. And then, um, you know, I guess the internet in the early nineties and starting to get, you know, above 50, and then you're in triple digits. And then 2004, you hit 1,300. And then you kind of hover around 2,000 for a while. And then 2012, you get up, you hover around 3,000 for a couple of years. And then in 2014, you get 2,300. Well, basically every year since 2013, the releases on archive.org and the net label category have decreased. And I guess we're only halfway through. I was I was looking at the numbers and I was like, oh man, that is really sad. But I guess I guess we're still in June, so um, we're really not that far um, off um, 2020 versus 2019. Um, it was 1,240 last year, and we're 597. You know, basically right at 600 right now. So we're, we're basically like right. You know, like I think probably a lot of stuff gets released right at the end of the year. Um, cause people are like, okay, I said I was going to release this in 2020 
ship it out the door. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I wouldn't, you know, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see that number be higher this year than it was last year. But, um, you know, talking about things on, um, on, um, Kong Kong Moo going down. I wonder how that tracks with like when Bandcamp first came around. Cause I think, you know, like people probably just use Bandcamp and, um, you know, aren't putting stuff on archive.org anymore. Um, so Bandcamp was founded in 2008. Um, it's also probably just a bunch of people just using Spotify and other streaming yeah, services yeah. for music. Yeah, that's true. Um, I wonder Spotify probably came around. Yeah, Spotify's slightly older than Bandcamp, but but yeah, I mean in the U.S. we didn't have Spotify for a while, so um, yeah, the uh, the whole streaming thing is um, a topic in and of itself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, um, Sam, NetLabel, I noticed this the other day, that NetLabel, they posted like a radio, um, like just a picture of a radio with like no commentary at all. Do you have any idea what that's referencing? I don't know. <laughs> have you seen that? I have. I uh, just have no idea what they mean. Oh, yeah, but... yeah. Um, yeah. There is whole album in rk.com designated to all the music stuff by control why why oh just they're just pictures yeah yeah The uh, put a pretty girl beside the thing you're selling, tried and true. <laughs> and this guy, uh, I don't know who this is. It looks like a professional tennis player. The other, the other tried and true sales method. I don't, I don't know. That that looks like a new turntable, to be honest. This last one, or it's not the very last, but um, I guess actually a, a lot of these things look. This looks pretty slick. Um, it's like a mini a mini record player. I'll drop that link in there. I think part part of them is just you know, 3D render. Is what? It's computer graphics, I think. Oh, oh, yeah. Guys, I don't really have much to add. I feel like I'm just kind of hanging in there. Here. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that... Um, that I have, uh, you know, other, other than like doing a deep dive on like a specific um, label, I don't know that there's a whole lot more to um, to talk about. Um, I'm sure that we'll talk about different net labels um, as they come up and other topics. Um, did um, this Sam, you or Victor want to say anything else? What is next week's topic going to be? Uh, is there going to be another poll? Is there going to what? Be another poll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't. We just didn't poll this week because um, right. last week we kind of cut things short. So, um, so yeah, I'll I'll get the poll out um, today. I'm probably going to stop. I'm probably going to like. Um, 
try to get it to uh, like just like five um, topics. Um, try to reduce the amount of like ties because the last couple of ones there's been a lot of like one people voting for a thing, um, and so um, this way maybe more people will cluster around a specific topic. So um, if people have um, suggestions, uh, I can certainly um, certainly put them on. I know that. Um, Craig had mentioned the uh, basically um, Pride Month finds, Pride Month, you know, post Pride Month uh, discussion. <laughs> um, we can we can talk about psychology and music. Okay. Any other uh, thoughts on topics for next week? I don't know. I'm pretty empty of topics choices. I think uh, one of them would be like U.S. artists for next week, since it's uh, July 4th weekend. That would be a good one. Oh, yeah. Um, I know Mark seemed interested in COVID music before. I can kind of start of a thread on that. So we can toss that on there. Um, and that leaves like one more if we're going to get the five. So protest I can think of music. one more. Okay. There's been a lot of protest music that came out about various things this last year. So. All right. I don't know. Well, sweet. I will. Uh, I have to write like a sentence or two <laughs> about the poll, so um, I can do that and then get it posted. Um, so I'll give a last call one more time for anybody. I'm good. Have a good weekend, gents. Thank All you right, for guys. You know, I'll talk to you guys next week. Yep. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.